Hi, my name is Julia Verry and I'm Molly Weston. Welcome to The Deck. In case you missed it, on April 16th, the robotics team won the state regionals and moved on to Worlds. They competed very well throughout, but came in 48th place out of 75 teams in their division. Visit our website, 310.org. We've got all the details. The Oakhurst Community Garden hosted the annual Wild Center Earth Day Festival two weeks ago. This year's festival was bee-themed in response to a controversial mural painted in Oakhurst this February. The decks, Sienna Elliott and Emmy Berberk, covered it. In early February, a controversial bee mural was painted in Oakhurst. In response to the mural, Decatur resident Suzanne Miller suggested a bee festival to raise awareness for the necessity of bees in our ecosystem. This proposal worked out perfectly to coincide with the annual Wild Center Earth Day Festival. This year's festival was titled Bee Wild and concentrated on celebrating the importance of bees. The festivities began with a bee-themed parade that started at the site of the mural in Harmony Park and ended at the Oakhurst Garden. The main purpose of the bee festival is really Earth Day. And um, as far as the bees, that's a very big component of our ecosystem worldwide is bees. So that's why, you know, why it's being featured this year. The mural caused controversy in the community because of the company that commissioned it. I think everybody likes the mural artistically. I just think that some people just thought it was a little bit um, hypocritical that Bayer Crop Science was sponsoring the mural. It was donated by Bayer, I guess, yeah. so yeah. There, that's how it began as far as I could tell. Um, Bayer, of course, the maker of certain neonicotinoid insecticides, um, and they're saying, oh, it's not entirely the, the you know, it's not just us. Yeah. So, and here, look, here's a nice mural for you. It's a little bit, yeah, I can see where the controversy would be. I don't think that there's any uh, uh, secret or or overt agenda to, you know, really go after Bayer or anything. That's just what drew our attention to it. And it's really, the festival's really about taking something that was perceived as sort of negative and turning it around into something positive. Sort of making, uh, taking lemons and making lemonade. The festival included music, concessions, art, a scavenger hunt, and plans to improve the future of Decatur. The scavenger hunt is basically a self-guided tour of the garden. So you're following the clues to find these pictures of the bees. And each picture has a letter on the back that you write down and the letter spells out a message on the back. Happy and what's the end? It's N for the chicken. Happy spring. I just want people to have fun and get excited about bees and start thinking about bees and thinking about their importance and thinking about the things that we can do both you know, in our own yards and on a larger scale. Do anything you can, start growing, grow flowers in your yard and not, don't spray. If you have to spray, spray very conservatively, very, you know, as little as possible. For The Deck, I'm Sienna Elliott with Emmy Berberick. Read about the community's opposition to the mural in Carpe Diem and Bayer's side of the story on 310.org. What does every kid love to play with? Trucks. And they got their fill last month. Here's the decks, Carter White and Jude Holmes. The empty parking lot next to the stadium, the Callaway lot, is not usually the place to find people, much less to find squealing children, tree chomping blades, or a 17 and a half ton hunk of metal that can blast water like a dragon blast fire. Though these elements may seem chaotic on their own, on March 26th, they came together to make the Decatur Touch a Truck, an event all about spreading joy, to local children. Spread the love, spread the happiness, show them what we're all about, and see if we can't bring a smile to the kid's face, you know? Many attendants, including Junior Cole Kaufman's brothers, Levi and Knox, were faced with one of the harder decisions that day, picking their favorite truck. That, that van, that looked like a van that was kind of brownish. My favorite truck was um, the um, digger. If you happen to be nearby on this gloomy day, you may have heard the of a variety of municipal vehicles. Thank you so much. Do the horns bother you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you honk the horn when you were in any of the trucks? Uh, no. The annual event defied the rain's attempts to dampen everyone's spirits. Um, it might have kept a few people home, but I think everyone loves Touch a Truck so much, they're just coming out with their umbrellas and their raincoats and enjoying everything. 
The event sponsor, Two Men in a Truck, invited children to decorate the inside of one of their box trucks with markers and crayons. Yeah, yeah man, I like the cars, it's for kids, everything's cool, you know, everybody's having fun at Two Men in a Truck, we're a moving company. The community farmer's market sported their old Ford pickup. One way that we can serve the community is by bringing the uh, farm vehicles here and that sort of thing to uh, give the kids a chance to experience how uh, the food moves back and forth from the farm. Not only is the event an opportunity to entertain children, it's an opportunity to connect citizens with city employees. They meet people that work in these various departments and put names and faces on the people that provide services and I think it brings a real sense of community. And community is at the heart of the event. It's, it certainly has been a part of Decatur's DNA for a long time, and as we grow, we want to want to keep it that way. It's a great event to see all the smile on the kids' face and their eyes pop open when they see these equipment. I, uh, you know, I thought there might be, you know, a, a, a trickling of uh, kids and parents, but it's been nonstop uh, kids and sirens and horns and uh, doors opening and shutting. As the day wrapped up. The event proved to be more than a fun distraction. All of this exposure may have inspired some kids. And what do you want to be when you grow up? A fighter fighter. A firefighter? Yeah. I'm Carter White. With Jude Holmes. I think that teenagers today have a lot to say. You know, you can say it through words, you can say it through song. You have so many emotions inside of you when you're a teenager. And people find like different ways to deal with that, you know. And so I think it's really important, especially if you have like a vision for like what you want your life to be, to start doing that like as soon as you can. I haven't heard in a while, and it brings back faces, voices, laughter, and your smile. And I wonder if you hear it. Over the summer, I started doing Eddie's Attic. I don't get stage fright, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not nervous before shows. But I was really nervous for this show, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I wasn't performing in front of a bunch of judgmental adults. But, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, freshmen, why not, you know? It's like, you want to be a model. You can't be a model. Why not? You're a freshman. You know? <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. When I call you, the line stays dead, but I don't care. Cause I keep if I ever got famous, I would want people to think of me as, like, someone who built themselves up from the bottom and who went out there and sent demo CDs and I guess I kind of want to do something unique. But they were the brightest by far. Check out our Vimeo channel and 310 for these stories. New videos will be posted over the next two weeks. I'm Ellie Butterfield with Lindsay Martin to give you an inside look at a kennel technician's life at Village Vets. Hi, I'm Jake Miller with Patrick Russell here at the 2016 Atlanta Model Train Show. We're here to take you on a journey into the resurging world of model trains and let you know what keeps the wheels rolling. The JV baseball team season consisted of nine wins and three losses. Last year, there was a new addition to the team that was sure to turn heads as she stepped up to the plate. I'm Kahari Davis here with Brandon Byers discovering his unique fashion hobby. I'm Derek Walker with Jack Brock and we're urban birding with Angus Pritchard. There's an Eastern Phoebe over there. Where? 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 Looking to hear some good music later this month? The annual Shaky Knees Festival returns May 13th through 15th, and the new electronic music-focused Shaky Beats will launch May 20th through 22nd. The $20 bill is getting a makeover. Andrew Jackson is out and Harriet Tubman is in. Look for the change on your money around 2020. Thanks for joining us for Deck 61. Enjoy the summer and we'll see you next year on The, the Deck. Deck.